guys, it's Becca and welcome to the Carriage House Homeschool. Thank you so much for coming back or thank you for stopping by if you are new. And if we are meeting for the first time, uh, my husband and I homeschool our four children uh, for almost 11 years now. We have three sons, ages uh, preschool age three and then an another son six and my other one is um, 12 and my daughter is 14. So I just wanted to share with you all these books that we've collected over years that we absolutely love and I highly recommend them for, for you to include in your little homeschool library. And also too, if there's books that you recommend for this season, then definitely leave them in the comments below. So the first book I have is Gift of the Tree by Alvin Tresselt. And this is such a beautiful book. It's written uh, almost like in a poetic way. Uh, so this would be a wonderful uh, book to have in the fall or if you're if you do if you like doing nature studies but this is written in from the trees perspective and what it goes through what it sees throughout the seasons autumn winter and it's just written very beautifully and it's um i love the pictures the paintings are very beautiful so definitely recommend this one i will leave links to all these by the way the next one i absolutely love is the scarecrow by beth Fairy and the Fan Brothers, and this is such a heartwarming book. Um, it's, you know, the, the typical thing is, you know, it scarecrows, scarecrows away. Well, in this case, the, um, the crows end up being the scarecrow's best friend, and then um, they help him out on his, his uh, little journey, winter journey, and they ended up being uh, good friends, and then they come back, and the little babies the little um, crow babies end up, um, you know, gathering and help picking them back up again. And it's, it's so sweet. <laughs> Definitely one that you want to keep. And also too, you know, these books, too oftentimes we think, oh, you know, picture book is for a very small child, like kindergarten. But actually, you know, the way a lot of these are written is wonderful for older kids as well. They may not, um, they may kind of deny it, but if you kind of squeeze them into the room during story time, then they'll, so I'm sure it'll catch their attention. The next one is Fletcher and the Falling Leaves, written by Julia Rawlinson. And just a sweet book, how the little, um, the fox thinks that something's wrong. The leaves are falling. He doesn't know what's happening. And um, and then at the end, it's revealed. His friends reveal what, what's going on. So. Then we have the Roll Away Pumpkin. This is a little different, but uh, I love the, the illustrations here. They're just really different. It's not something that we normally have in our schoolroom, but it's, uh, it's really cute. But it's about a little girl. Loses her big pumpkin and it goes rolling down the village and everybody uh, in the village or, or some of the characters end up uh, falling or, and then the pumpkin ends up, oh, just give it the ending away. That's not good. And at the end, the pumpkin just goes splat, and they end up doing a pumpkin stew. Sorry, I get distracted. They end up uh, making a pumpkin stew. The whole village does. The next one is, is a little similar. It's the gigantic turnip, and um, just really love these illustrations here. They're kind of kind of bubbly and fun, lively, um, but it's a repetition, a repetitive type of, of, of book, so it's good. So um, I think this is more like late September where they go try to get the turnip out of their garden and they have all their little farm, little animals trying to help out and they end up making a, another stew of some kind of turnip stew. So, Okay, so I do have a couple other ones, and I got some board books, and then I also have some nonfiction books that you might like for your homeschool room. Um, oh, and two, I have two, okay, so there's two board books that I don't have, I can't find in our house because we use them so much, we read them every night, so I, I couldn't find them, but it's called, the the first board book is called The Busy Little Squirrel. It's adorable, I've, I've actually bought, I think this is like our fourth copy, but I've, we've had that particular book, the first one, when since, since my um, my daughter was in preschool, and then we kept passing them down, but over time, it would just wear out, and the board book, sadly, would fall apart, and, but I loved the book so much, and wanted to pass it, pass the story down to my, my younger children, and um, so I had to 
to buy a couple of new copies, but I don't have it here. I will link it down below. It's called The Busy Little Squirrel. And the other one that similar, uh, similar circumstances um, is the, oh, The Apple Farmer Annie. That's such a sweet book, um, board book for little ones. And then while we're on board books, I have this Lift a Flap Surprise Autumn in the Forest. I think I got this at Barnes & Noble. I'll probably just go ahead and do Amazon links just for the, the, the sole purpose of just keeping everything organized and everything. But I do think I did buy this at Barnes & Noble. But one bad thing about going to bookstores, sometimes you go and you have one book that a really, really good book and you go to look for it the next year, you know, maybe it got lost or something and it's not there. So. Flap Surprise Autumn in the Forest, which is cute for little hands. Um, little with the flaps, very colorful, very sweet. And I like how it's kind of 3D. Well, some of them are kind of 3D pop out. I like this one right here. So, really cute. Also, biscuit books are always good. We have so many of these biscuit books. It's a pumpkin patch. A lot of them are them. This one's not, but a lot of them are like the um, touch and feel type of books. But love biscuit books. I love fall. This is another sweet one. Um, the little girl ends up picking. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. We're just getting over being <coughs> being sick, so trying to to do to, to get better. But she gathers all these things, all the, the, the things off the harvest for fall, and then she ends up making a little basket for friends to give away. So, very sweet. And then Pumpkin Patch Blessings. This one's very sweet too. Uh, a God and nature inspired book. Just appreciate what we have in nature. And um, it's a rhyming book, which is, um, which is very sweet. This is my favorite seeing that little book. It's just like so cozy. I don't know. I just want to crawl in there, eat the apple pie, and sit by the fire. Pumpkin Jack is also a good one. Too Many Pumpkins is an, another really good one. They're very worn out. This is actually an old, this is actually a library book. I think I got it at the library book sale for like five cents or something. Bernstein Bears are always wonderful. This one's getting see the glare. Um, the Harvest Festival. Teaches us about friendships and honoring this time of year. Let it fall is another cute one. Um, these are all scholastic, or these two are scholastic books. And Ap Autumn is for Apple is very sweet. <laughs> I don't know if you guys like Pig, Pig the Pug books. I think they are absolutely funny. I don't have, I don't think they have a fall one. But um, if you haven't, they're they're hilarious. They're really funny. Um, but just looking at this guy is this doll <laughs> just makes me laugh at night with the kids and we all laugh. So if you're looking for something that's very, you know, you just want a good chuckle with your kids, I definitely recommend Pig the Pug books. They're hilarious. Um, okay, and so I have three um, nonfiction books that I do like to have in our homeschool room. We've had these for years and years and I like to just put them out in a our little unit study section. I did do a homeschool room tour a couple weeks ago, so you can always check that out. So I can read about seasons, another scholastic book. Uh, really, really good for learning about seasons and everything. And I kind of like it because it's a little muted, like it's not so over uh, powerful, which I love the books. I love the colorful books, but like this one is just very pretty, very relaxed. The art is, um, is uh, it's nice and dim, and it does talk about the autumn equinox, the Earth's position, um, goes into more, oh, the monarch, flight of the monarchs, too, so I love, I love this one. This is a really good one. And the last two are How Do Apples Grow? Um, I like these book, these books. They're Let's Read and Find Out Science, and they've got all kinds. You can find these anywhere, Barnes and Noble. Um, but how do apples grow? I like these books also too because I think they've got. I thought one of them did. Usually they've got like a little activity or a science experiment that you can do. I don't know if this one does, but again, just the whole process of. Uh, when a flower is fertilized, um, the female cells in the ovaries, uh, fertilized by pollen, 
all of that good stuff. So just mere facts, but um, not in a dry way, very, you know, delivered in a, a good way. And then again, why do leaves change color? Love this one. It's just very pretty, very informative. And this is good too, because you can incorporate, um, you can bring, actually bring in leaves from outside and do sort of like a comparison the, uh, type of little activity. So I really like these. Oh yeah, here's some. Make a leaf rubbing. You could do that with your child. Press some leaves. Things like that. So, so those are the books that I have to share. Again, if you have any books that you re highly recommend, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, or, or anything that's uh, related to, to fall and autumn time, then definitely leave them in the comments below. And so glad that you're here with me today. And I hope you're doing well and stay safe and happy fall. Take care. Bye.